<laughs> well, hi, Dave. Um, Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so is there anything in particular that's on the top of your mind? At the top of my mind, there are a few things on the top of my mind, but the first thing I'm going to ask you is... I don't know. It's just it's something that I just don't know how I feel about. Because um, before I start like spouting my ideas, I guess I should like just give a like a basic introduction. Um, I'm like vaguely anarchist. How I came to these positions, it's it's not through like reading theory. I am by no means a theory hound. Um, I I'm a history buff, right? And I and as I started learning more and more about revolutions, over time I just gravitated towards the anarchist position. Um, so, like, big important theories, like big thinkers, Blanqui, Proudhon, Kropotkin, etc. I'm vaguely familiar with what they said and what they thought, um, but only the big parts that were historically significant. Okay. Um, so, what's been on my mind is, uh, is the... Do you believe in to each according to their needs or to each according to their labor? Oh, um, I, okay. So I'll take it even one step further. Fuck needs. Sure. Um, I think that, uh, I think that, okay. So either I'm going to re recontextualize the word need, or I'm going to introduce a new term, right? Okay. Either way. Um, luxuries are a necessity. Now I'm not saying everybody gets their own mega yacht. Of course, mm -hmm. but I think that the, the 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 what we what under the capitalist yoke we have begun to consider uh, consider luxuries are in fact the necessities of life, right? And so I would argue that not only do I believe according to their need, I believe a more expansive definition of need need be implemented. I really like that definition. Because I'm imagining, like, uh, you've seen The Matrix, right? No, never heard of it. What is it? Yes, of course. <laughs> you know how, like, on that ship they had that, like, oatmeal? Yes. Where it was just, like, sludge? Uh -huh. The gruel. And, like, yeah, yeah. Like, technically that met their need, but, like, that's, that's such a miserable life, you know? Uh -huh. I I think that um, an anarchist that I, I really admire is uh, Bakunin, right? And what he said about where liberties come from. Um... He said, fuck, uh, how was the term? It was, uh, how do you phrase it? It was, um, society, instead of limiting one's, like, individual agency, creates the, the, the liberty of all. Because imagine a man who sent out into, uh, into wilderness from birth, you know, the, the, the most talented, gifted individual ever, just sent out into the wilderness in total isolation. This guy's gonna grow up to be a complete brute, um, who is incapable of complex thought and emotion, right? That's not necessarily human in my book. So even if you meet all your needs, there's, there's that level above that, mm -hmm. that, that that you need to meet to become human. My issue with to each according to their need is just, is that sustainable? At the very least, I believe in to each according to their labor. But how could we create, I guess, social institutions that are one, free of dominance hierarchies and two capable of like distributing these resources and luxuries etc on a uh, in a way that is sustainable um okay so yeah carpe that was one of my first thoughts too um so two things one uh, well three things one um may i ask approximately how old you are i'm 25 okay cool um, two, thing about the labor, um, that's eugenic towards people who can't provide the labor. Um, but three, you're looking at too big of a picture. And this, this happens oftentimes with, um, okay, so if you really want to adjust this, read Bellamare, Michelle Luc Bellamare, B-E-L-L-A-M-R-E, all right? This will, if you, you really want to like get nerdy about it, you can go read Bellamare or you can have me interpret him for you, right? Um, one of the things he taught me, I'm still alive, he's in Canada if you want to go talk to the man, um, he's even on Twitter. One of the things that, uh, that I learned from Bellamare was t the understanding of micro-revolutionary actions versus macro-revolutionary actions. 
and the things that you are positing, the 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 solutions, the the end goals, the project of projects, right? That yeah. you you are positing are problems for a future generation. And it will hamper or hamstring your action and your praxis now if you focus on that. Yes, that will be an issue, but it's not an issue for you. You need to focus on downstream localized dual power structures and grassroots activity. In these parts, welcome, by the way, we have a shorthand, com, a shorthand term, a phrase for this. You need to focus on making a sandwich, right? So you need to go feed people. You need to ensure that your local community has library, has medical care if they're downtrodden. They, they, they have access to food, this sort of thing. You need to focus as an anarchist on those basic things because functionally that's how anarchistic societies grow and function. They don't function from a top-down system. So they, you need to cultivate, you need to inculcate, you need to vaccinate people with these, with these methods of thinking. Because how would they work when people have only existed in the cave seeing shadows their entire life? Right? How can they even begin to con conceptualize at the scope and scale level that you are, you are, you're concerned with in that instance? How can these people even begin to operate in, in an anarchistic fashion when all they've ever known is hierarchy? All they've ever known is dominance methodologies. All they've ever known is the patriarchy. All they've ever known is the military industrial complex, right? And so ultimately, before you can address a macro revolutionary ideal, such as the one that you're addressing, you have to teach individuals micro revolutionary tactics and techniques. And that happens at the interpersonal grassroots localized dual power structure level. And so while those are valid concerns, those are valid concerns for a future anarchist or a future version of yourself. I fully agree. Everything you said is incredibly based, and right off the bat, you've given me a lot to think about. So I'm very glad I joined this Twitch stream out of nowhere and asked to be, you know, on. Oh, oh. Um, You're roboting. Um, From... Oh, hello? Audio testing. Can there we go. Me? I can hear you again. Sure. Uh, did you miss anything? Uh, basically everything after uh, based, and I'm uh, glad I joined this Twitch stream. Yeah, um, that, that was basically it, you know. Um, you've given me a lot to think about, so I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. To each according to the labor is eugenic towards people who cannot provide it. Um, to, to what you said about local organizing and, and that interpersonal relation, um, I'm about to dox myself a little, but I'm okay with that. Um, I live in the downtown east side of Vancouver, British Columbia, right? Hey, we got Canada another Canadian. Oh, Jesus. Too, yeah. many, too, many Canadians. Canada, too many Canadians in this community. We got to keep an eye on this. Somebody watching the border. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, we're everywhere. Watch your backs, all right? <laughs> um, but there's a massive homeless population here. We're right on the West Coast. Historically, winters have, have been very mild. Like, maybe... I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit for the rest of the audience, but, um, like, at worst, five... 10 degrees celsius right so this means that's uh, that 41 homeless... that's 41 uh five gotcha. five is 41 gotcha um that means that the homeless population of canada if they can make the journey here they did to avoid the brutal winters elsewhere mm -hmm. right and i live right in the middle of the of uh the neighborhood where they tend to congregate recently there was a street sweep by the mayor uh ken sim um 200 people were displaced and local distro groups set up a warming tent where they handed out food, dry clothing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. And I participated in that. I found it to be very fulfilling. However, I found things to be lacking. Mm -hmm. um, on on social media, I've I've joined or I followed a bunch of different accounts of like local, vaguely leftist activism, right? And I, I'm not looking to have like heated discussions about theory with them i just want to get together with them and help people you want to make a sandwich exactly exactly and i have been making sandwiches but there's an element that's missing um 
a lot of this mutual aid stuff that's going on. It's it's simply just like some someone's Instagram story saying, "Hey, a BIPOC person can't afford rent. Please donate." And like, I, I'm not critiquing that approach. I want to. I just want to point out how you want to. Mo- you want a there, more there permanence seems, to it. You want to. I suppose so in a way, but what strikes me is that there's a lack of kinship. Oh, like how, yeah. how let's say, the Iroquois had it, right? And how they had their mutual aid, where it was one's kinship group, one's clan that would provide for them, right? Um, in our hyper-atomized society, how would you go about fostering this, this, these kinship groups, these clans, Dave, these communities? Dave, Dave, you, you, found, you, found the, you found the right place. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. You found the right place. <laughs> This is, this is, you're our people. You're our people. Just welcome home. Welcome Thank home. You. Um, you're, I, I've been, I've been making sandwiches myself for like 10 years or so. Um, this is you. Okay. So I have two answers for you. One, you're looking at it. You're actually experiencing it. Now you've just walked in off the street and you're getting the lay of the land and you're experiencing only the front side of it as a Twitch stream. But I, I promise you and encourage you, integrate yourself into this community. Spend time on our Discord server. When you see people in VC, hell, fucking just go in VC and wait and somebody will join you. Learn the nuances and the ways this community is a community because I use that term so much more with so much more integrity and honor than any other of my fellow political streamers on Twitch. It's, it's a very, I, I regard, I go into it with intention. Second, the answer that you really are seeking is Saul Alinsky. Saul Alinsky? Yes. You want to read rules for radicals. Um, that's what you need to read. Now you can you can watch it. You can watch me read it on YouTube. Uh, if you if you're more of a, a audio sort of visual person, I read it on a, uh, on uh, uh, and it's up on the YouTube, proudly radical YouTube. Somebody might have a link if the hive mind wants to get to work for you, or if you're a reader, um, you want to read rules for radicals by by Alinsky. Um, Rules for Brad. Okay. Don't don't listen to any of the hype. Don't read any of the fucking reviews. Just read the book itself, right? Um, and yes, you're looking at doing community organizing. That's what you're actually interested in. You're interested yeah. in becoming a community organizer, and Alinsky is the like grandpappy of understanding how organizing works right and you have to include this humanizing element and all of these other things this is a big lesson this is a lesson that does not happen in the course of this conversation but i hear what you're saying and i'm 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 hearing you and in response i'm saying hey there's the link uh link will be in chat for you dave uh the play the playlist off of uh, from dyer thank you dyer um hang out You'll look, you'll, you'll figure it out. Ask questions, engage in the conversation. We're here. We're happy to answer these questions because I hear you. And what you're looking for is a more permanent solution. And that takes a whole host of things. There is no simple answer to it. And the answer is an answer you're going to have to provide yourself because it's going to have to be tailored and customize to your community and the needs that you are attempting to address. And so there is no simple answer. It's a complicated, big answer. But I suppose if the simple answer, if there is to be a simple answer had, it's you're going to have to, you're going to have to do it, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I realize that, and sometimes it feels like I, I know it's not the case. But sometimes it feels like, uh, like, and, and it's, I'm probably like self-aggrandizing here, but it feels like Atlas, right? Mm-hmm. Where I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to, to f- fight the, f- to, to stem back the tide mm-hmm. of just this hyper-atomized world, and I'm trying my best to engage in local community. Now, luckily, where I live, there's, there's a, there's a rich, rich community 
of, of multiple, many different um, advocacy groups, leftist groups um, of, of, of different ideologies who are just out there on the street helping people. And I just, I don't know. It, it just, it, it's hard not to get bummed out when, when I see all this activism. And yet, it's just like a drop in the bucket, you know? Mm -hmm. it, okay, so you're facing leftist burnout at the age of 25. Congratulations. Um, Gen, Gen Z is pretty much subject to this. Um, Kaiser, God, I wish you were a Portlander. Um, yeah, if you were in Portland, it's a whole other ball game, right? Um, so you are facing leftist burnout at the age of 25. Gen Z faces this at greater in greater rates than previous generations even. Um, but you need... A community all right you need your community you need to find a community that you feel at home in right and that's that's you're you're speaking more about your needs as an anarchist as an activist and as a a, a newborn organizer right than actually the community's needs and every organizer needs a community to organize. And so you have a choice. You can go out there and try and organize these disparate groups, which I will tell you right now is a recipe for failure. Yeah. Or you can figure out a niche and a gap that you, that is unique to you that you can fill where you can identify a need that has not been met. You can't address, you are but one man, Dave, or one person, sorry. You are but one person, right? You can't fix the world, right? But you're going to want to. So you have to find a way to temper that. And so you have to find a way in which you can feel like you made a difference even if it's small, you haven't found that yet. And so you're still searching and that's fine. That's just a part of the process. I went through it. Everybody goes through it. But when you figure it out, you'll start engaging in it. And that's where you need like Alinsky. You need to understand the methods because you're going to come up against a system that's going to push back against you. And you need to be prepared for that. And you need to understand how you organize people and how you engage in this level of activism. It just depending on what you engage in. And so you've got a road, you've got a long road ahead of you and you need to strap in for that journey because the words that you're saying to me are not the typical words that people come in off the street. Like AJ can attest, AJ fuck it, you know, like it just, usually it's like, hey, I want to know more of that sort of thing. You are actively like already on your path to becoming a, an organizer yourself. Yeah, I, I came in having known about anarchism because of a conversation on a podcast that didn't have any theory to it. So you just having names of actual writers and thought leaders from anarchism is a big, big step already done. Yeah. So like you need to, you need to one, figure out a stress relief for yourself Two, don't feel guilty to take time for yourself. Took me two years of building this community before actually we could argue it took three, um, before I would take a day off. All right. So like, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. And four, you need to find people that you can call your people and you're looking to do this locally you're looking to engage this this in a local space so you've got all these disparate groups look for people in those groups that align with your vision right that that see things the way you see them and you can communicate on an honest level with now that's going to take time because I don't think you know what your vision is yet, right, Dave? Honestly, I, I think I do. Um, well, like I said, I'm a big, big fan of history, right? 
And with the big epoch events like French Revolution, Russian Revolution, etc., 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 these are all like super dramatic cataclysmic events. But by the end of it all, the paradigm shifted maybe one step over. I fully recognize that in my lifetime, in our lifetimes, anarchism definitely isn't going to be achieved, at, at least to the level that I would want. Maybe like the, the typical uh, Hobbesian definition of anarchism, you know, yes. like just like violent chaos, perhaps. Um, I've recently contented myself with just flinging polemics for the rest of my life. <laughs> I, I want to do more than that, right? May I... May I attempt to redefine anarchism for you? Well, to me, anarchism is the absence of a ruler. Okay, so um, and you you are going by a very prescriptive anarchos and without uh, uh, and without arcos ruler, right? Mm -hmm. um, very very classical prescriptive definitional set, right? Respect, but anarchism is not a dead methodology or philosophy like communism. It's still being written, and it gets rewritten and rewritten every day somebody practices it, right? And so one of the lessons that was learned, and I'm just going to pull age rank on you, unfortunately. One of the lessons that was learned before you showed up on the scene, right? And by that, I mean literally born. Um, one of the lessons that we learned was that our understanding of anarchism as far as he uh, heterarchical organizational structures and distributed network topologies needed to be applied to anarchism itself, not just the systems we are attempting to replace. And once anarchism grasped that idea, you saw a rebirth, a renewal of anarchistic thought in the early 90s basically for all intents and purposes and so could you walk me through that one more time please well okay so here you go you're looking to institute anarchism and anarchism lives and breathes between you and i it's about the, and I'm going to drop a godforsaken post-structuralist on us right now, but <laughs> it's, a, it's about the Foucaultian power dynamics between us and the network that we create, affinity groups, right? This is you start to, you start to build affinity groups, and from those affinity groups come uh, greater structures. But how we organize those and how we uh, actually work with within them you have to you know include things like consensus decision making which enables a hierarchical uh, structure to actually engage within decision making within itself right we have these tools but anarchism isn't going to be a meta revolution it's not going to work at the macro level because you and I do not have the tools or the ability to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with neoliberal hypercapitalism. Yeah. So once you grasp that and you set aside the French revolutionary meta-narrative and you embrace the new sort of cybernetic theory-informed anarchism of the new era and you understand that anarchism – isn't going to happen anarchism has been happening and continues to happen on a global scale every day in all all sorts of places once you recontextualize how anarchism works and what it is for yourself into the new anarchistic model mm -hmm. rather than viewing anarchism through the lens of the systems we are attempting to dismantle them itself. You start to understand like, oh shit, it is supposed to be distributed, not just decentralized. What does that actually mean as far as a community organizer goes? It means I shouldn't be concerned with what Washington or Ottawa is doing as so much as 
I should encourage potentially locally down ticket voting, which in our part of the world means, you know, your local elections, that sort of thing, because as an organizer, that makes your life easier. If I can get a city councilor, a mayor or somebody elected who's not foaming at the mouth to destroy my local like community gardens or my, you know, food, not bombs project, that makes my life easier. But ultimately, I shouldn't be focused on that structure because as an anarchist, what I'm supposed to be doing is educating the populace so they can understand and equip them so themselves with these tools that I already have that I already possess and can share with them. And once they equip themselves with those tools, then they can aid me and assist me and everyone else and themselves in building these dual power structures at a local level. Because if you and I live two towns over from each other and my town sets up a community garden that uh, and a community uh, food store and a community kitchen and sets up a free library and a free clinic and you replicate those same things, then when the economic downturn and crisis of the bullshit capitalist system that we live on under actually comes you and i can help the third town by us yeah right and so mm -hmm. ultimately it is about assembling ourselves at a grassroots atomized level you are attempting to fight the atomization i am telling you embrace it because that's where your true power lies everything you're saying is just like connecting dots in my head because <laughs> yeah i know that feeling yeah yeah like um as i was as i've been studying history I've, i found myself growing more and more frustrated with people like uh uh robespierre lenin cicero pancho via etc etc right people who, who who sought to destroy terror by wielding it through some sort of vanguardism etc etc and lately oh. i have been trying to embrace that that individual agency that i have over the world and and i recognize that uh you you mentioned bakunin kids we're gonna do it again um oh. okay so are you familiar okay so do you you you're you you like history right i do okay I do. so you consider yourself some sort of fledgling anarchist um mm -hmm. the first international marx and bakunin yeah right Mean girls in high school, right? Exactly. Just fighting like cats and fucking dogs. They hated each other. They went after each other. And that's the reason. Bakunin's the reason anarchists got disinvited from the first international and not invited to the second international, right? Like that's mm – -hmm. this is why we got kicked out. And so um, <clears throat> allow me to read you a paragraph of what Bakunin said about Marx from sure. the first international. Marx is an authoritarian and centralizing communist. He wants what we want, the complete triumph of economic and social equality, but he wants it in the state and through the state power, through the dictatorship of a very strong and, so to say, despotic provisional government, that is, by the negation of liberty. His economic ideal is the state as sole owner of the land and of all kinds of capital, cultivating the land under the management of state engineers and controlling all industrial and commercial associations with state capital. We want the same triumph of economic and social equality through the abolition of the state and all that passes by the name of law, which in our view is the permanent negation of human rights. We want the reconstruction of society and the unification of mankind to be achieved, not from above downwards by any sort of authority, nor by socialist officials, engineers, and other accredited men of learning, but from below upwards by the free federation of all kinds of worker associations liberated from the yoke of the state. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why I like what Bakunin has to say, aside from the anti-Semitism. Well, um, everybody's problematic in their own way and the further back you go the more problematic it gets takes the take the good ideas leave the bad exactly it's not we don't do hero worship here do we no exactly. no gods no exactly. masters no yeah. heroes mm -hmm. um, I, I agree Doug with Sam. you that uh, <laughs> um i guess a way to put it what everything you just said that everything short of a widespread grassroots movement would be social engineering and doomed to failure and i should i i should focus on 
localized grassroots organizing. Right? Yeah. Am I following? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Generally, that's been my position. And I don't know. Like, really, I just saw an anarchist streamer. I was like, oh, I, I really want to vibe check this guy. Is this guy based or is, it, or is he just like a like a closeted sock den or ML or something? Oh, we have. Yeah, we have strong ideas about all of those. My corners of the pie my uh i look i can't you can't i can't you can't make an ethos argument on on behalf of yourself on that one but stick around ask the community my credentials are well and truly in order okay awesome cool well you've given me a lot to think about um i think i'm gonna hop off for the time being but i will certainly stick around uh thanks for having me on the show we um the stream happens if if i'm not deciding not to it happens five days a week monday wednesday friday 5 30 p.m pacific tuesdays thursdays 11 30 p.m pacific and on fridays we do bad movie night after stream on the discord server um and every day there are voice calls that happen with numerous amounts of people in them um, and the server is active all the time in some way, shape, or form. So I would heavily encourage you to just dive in, participate. Yeah? Yeah. I Well, I certainly feel included, so you guys are doing a really good job of that. Thank you. Um, yeah. It's all nice right. to meet you, Dave. I look forward to getting yeah. to know you. Nice meeting you guys, too. Hope you all have a lovely night. Take care. Yeah, good talking.